Let's take a look at the two most commonly used types of blades on the table saw. There's a cross cutting blade and a rip cutting blade. The cross cutting blade has many small teeth. The rip cutting blade has fewer larger teeth. The cross cutting blade is designed to make the cleanest cut when cutting across the fibers of the wood. The teeth of the cross cutting blade alternate angles from one to the next. Cross-cutting blades are also well suited for cutting plywood. This is the direction of a cross-cut in natural wood. The rib-cutting blade has more space between the teeth and deeper gullets. This accommodates the long fibers that result when cutting parallel to the wood grain. You'll also notice that the top of the teeth are all flat. This is the direction of a rip cut in natural wood. Here's a review of the controls on our table saws in the shop. The main power switch is here. The lights will blink while it initializes the emergency brake. Pull the large red paddle out to turn the saw on. Push it in to turn the saw off. If you are using your hands to hold a piece of material on the saw and you need to turn it off in an emergency, you can use your knee to push the paddle in. To change the elevation of the saw blade, loosen this clamp and turn the hand crank. The saw blade can be lowered all the way into the table or raised to just about three inches. You can also change the angle of the table saw blade to make beveled cuts with the hand crank on the left side of the control panel. When doing a rip cut on the table saw, it's essential to keep the edge of your material tightly against the rip fence at all times. To do this, we're going to stand a little to the left and direct our push towards the fence. You can use a push block whenever you want, but since this is wider than six inches, it's not required. Just remember to push the piece fully past the blade. With plywood, a rip cut is with the longest dimension of the material, and it's generally easy to keep that long edge against the rip fence during the cut. In a cross cutting orientation, there is not enough contact to stabilize the piece. To do cross cuts on the table saw, remove the rip fence and use a cross cutting sled to support your material. Here's a review of how to make a rip cut on the table saw. A rip cut is with the grain of the wood or in the long direction. We have a ripping blade set in the table saw. To minimize our exposure to the table saw blade, I'm going to adjust the height so that only one full tooth of the blade is above the surface of our material. I've made a pencil mark on this board where I want to cut it. To move the rip fence, lift up on the red handle, slide it, and press down on the red handle to lock it in place. To keep our material in alignment with the rip fence, we use a feather board. The feather board goes in front of the saw blade and locks to the table surface with magnets. I always want to have a push block ready so that I can keep my fingers at a safe distance while pushing the material through the cut. It's required for cuts less than six inches. Behind the saw blade is a metal wedge called a splitter, which helps to keep your cut in alignment and keeps wood with internal tensions from pinching the sides of the saw blade. If, however, you have enough room, we always prefer that you use a complete blade guard. To install the blade guard, make sure that the master power for the saw is turned off. Remove the throat plate and lift the lever that clamps the splitter in place. Insert the blade guard, reclamp, and reset the throat plate. Now everything is ready for our rip cut. I'll set the wood in place, 
turn the master power switch on and let it initialize. This can take a moment. Turn the saw on and slowly and steadily push the wood into the cut. When it's all the way on the table, use the push block to continue pushing the material past the saw blade. Failing to push the material completely past the saw blade can cause a dangerous kickback hazard. The table saw is excellent at making multiple cuts with exactly the same dimensions without having to mark your material or change your setup. We're going to make some pieces of square cross section by using the thickness of the board to set the rip fence. Lock the fence in place. And let's consider which side of the board will go face up or down on the table. If your material is cupped or bowed, as you can see this piece is, be sure to put the cupped side facing down so that it won't rock back and forth on the table during the cut. Pick a narrow push block that fits between the saw blade and the rip fence. When your material is up on the table into the cut, grab the push block and carry it through. Notice for this cut, I'm going to push the piece between the saw blade and the rip fence all the way past the blade. That's essential. That's the piece that can get caught and kicked back if it hasn't cleared the blade when you let go. If you don't push both pieces past the blade completely, you can sometimes be left with a small bump at the end of the board that hasn't been cut. That bump can mess up the registration of your next cut by holding it away from the rip fence. It's helpful to push both pieces completely past the blade to end up with clean cuts on both sides. As you watch the sequence one more time, pay attention to the fluid movement of the material throughout the cut and the control of the piece between the saw blade and the rip fence until it has cleared the blade on the far side. Turn off the saw and wait for it to come to a complete stop before reaching for your materials. Here you can see we have a couple of identical pieces that are square in cross section. Making a cross cut on the table saw can be done with a cross cut sled. When we use the sled, we do not use the rip fence. Move it well out of the way. The sled runs in the guide tracks on the table surface and can be pushed past the blade. As always, adjust the height of the blade correctly. Position your piece against the back wall of the cross cut sled. If it's a small piece, you can use a push block to hold it down. Hold the sled from the sides and push it through the cut in a steady motion. Keep your hands to the side and turn off the saw, waiting for it to come to a complete stop before retrieving your parts. The table saw can make accurate angled cuts with the use of a miter gauge. Adjust the clamps and if you want, select a preset angle. Remember to adjust the blade height to one tooth above your material. Hold your piece with your hand far from the blade and pass it steadily through the cut. Retrieve your piece without reaching over the blade. 